Well, good morning everybody and once again welcome to church. Good congregation today, haven't we? Fantastic, but I'm, I'm trusting that many of you are out there and you're not just going to be watching, but that you're really going to participate in our service because that's what it's all about. Every Sunday is a Resurrection Sunday and we have so many reasons to sing this morning, so please do join in. Uh, I just want to make one announcement, uh, but also to remind you at the end of our service, we will uh, have Jamie and Jane giving us some more announcements. So uh, when we do the final blessing, please don't just switch off, but stick with uh, the announcements at the end. But the one announcement I do want to make is that uh, after the success of the first one, which was a couple of weeks ago, we're having another Kids Church Go Live where leaders from Marilyn and Dollingstown will be putting on a really, really special time at half past 11. And here is just a little snippet of what you can expect. <laughs> It looks brilliant, doesn't it? My uh, we Eliza absolutely loved Kids Church Go Live last uh, a couple of weeks ago. And just to let you know, that will be happening every second week. So keep an eye out for that. Half 11 on Sundays every second week. Now we're going to move on into our service and let's begin with a time of prayer. Heavenly Father, we want to invite you uh, to fill our worship with meaning today. We know that these are strange times. We know that it's a little bit like Groundhog Day as we continue to tune in on our, our TVs and our iPads. But yet, you are worthy of our worship and we want to give you all our praise today. God, your Son, Jesus Christ, is the resurrection and the life. Would you raise us who trust in him from the death of sin to the life of righteousness that we might seek things which are above, where you reign with the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let's sing. Yeah, girls. 
recently in church we done the prayer course and we used an acronym called P-R-A-Y. P is for pause, R is for rejoice, A is for ask and Y is for yield. And I'm going to use that to help us pray this morning. So let's pray. So let's just pause. Let's just still our hearts and reflect on the goodness of God just as we approach him in prayer. So just take a moment to pause. Just all those noises, just let them go and let's now rejoice. God, we just thank you that you are King, Lord. That you are the one who ever wants to hear our prayers, Lord. You take great delight in the voice of your children, Lord. And we thank you that we can approach you with boldness in prayer, that you care about even the smallest things that are happening in our lives. Lord, we pray for the church. We pray that it would be a faithful witness in this time, Lord. And we rejoice that you have given us a solid truth to stand on your eternal word. Lord, we rejoice that you are ever present in the midst of trials, that nothing will ever catch you by surprise. You are king over all. Lord, we rejoice that you are with us until the end, until our last breath, you are king for those who have come to you through Jesus. And now we're going to ask. Lord God, we pray that you would be with those who are fighting against coronavirus, whether on the front line, whether in labs, whether providing essential services. Lord, we ask that you would be with those who are caring for families, who are trying to teach kids. Lord, we ask that you would be with those who are lonely during this time, who are bereaved. God of all comfort, we ask that you would be present in their lives, Lord. And God, we plead, we really do pray that this time would be a megaphone in people's ears, that they would taste the shortness and the reality of life and realize there is a creator, the King of all, Jesus Christ. And they would turn to you in faith and you would provide them with comfort and hope and joy. And now we just yield. Let's just take in all our prayers and saying, God, may your will be done. So God, as we have prayed, and the biggest thing that is happening to us now is this coronavirus crisis and the lockdown and people's jobs at risk, Lord. And we have lost the sense of control that we once thought we had. So we are reminded in all this that we can only pray that your will be done. We take many steps forward, God, but you are the one planning the path. So in all our prayers, let us yield to you, knowing that you know the best path forward. And now together, we're going to say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. In the name of the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Set your rule and reign in our hearts again. Increase in us, we pray.
chapter 1 verses 3 to 5. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to his great mercy he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. To an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled and unfading, kept in heaven for you. Who by God's power are being guarded through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. This is the word of the Lord. Uh, good morning, everyone. It's a pleasure to be with you again uh, this morning. Uh, you've just heard First uh, Peter verses three to five read to you, and that's where we're we're focusing this morning. So, if you have your Bible with you or or to hand, it would be quite good. They're just just three verses, and but they're packed full of uh, amazing teaching, and insight, and and great encouragement. Uh, for us, especially in these in these days, but I want you to I want to begin by asking you to consider uh, consider consider this phrase. This was said by uh, Warren Wearsby, a uh, famous commentator, writer of many many books, great theologian, and all that. And he said the following: What life does to us depends on what life finds. In us. I'll say that again. What life does to us depends on what life finds in us. So I kind of want that to be uh, percolating in, in, in you now as we look at these, at these verses. A little bit of context. Um, Peter's writing to a church at a time just before it's about to endure great trials, great trials, great tests, uh, a great amount of stress within the church. So he's writing to them to build them up, to edify them. We talked about edification there a week or so ago. He's, build, he's building them up and he's rooting their faith in the solid foundations that are uh, typified in the person of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. But he knows that trials and tests are coming, and so he wants them to be a hopeful people. He wants them to be a hopeful people. And the, the book of First Peter in particular is one of the most hopeful books in Scripture precisely because it roots the believer in the firm foundations of his or her faith, okay? Of his or her faith. You'll have heard that you will have heard the phrase, while there is life, there's hope. It's, it's a phrase that dates back to, to Roman times. It's not a, a recent invention or, or something that was, uh, was brewed in the last couple of hundred years. Where there's life, there's hope has been around since Roman times. It, it, met, it met their expectation of life and death, where there's, where there's life, there's hope of continuing life. But we as Christians don't buy into that. 
We can recognize the sentiment behind it, but what we would say is that, that it's not the fact of life that determines hope, but the faith of life which determines hope. To get that, it's not the fact of life which determines hope, but the faith of life. And this is what Peter is getting into in these verses of uh, verses 3 to 5 of the first chapter of 1 Peter. He's telling them about the hope beyond all hopes, the definitive hope. There is nothing bigger, there's nothing wider, there's nothing greater than this hope that characterizes their faith. So he begins in verse 3 by, by saying, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. A living hope. We're coming through the Easter season. We've just celebrated Easter there a few weeks ago. The essence of Easter is the resurrection, which is the proof of the hope of life after death, personified in Jesus Christ. Our hope is not something that gets dashed on the rocks of life with all the vagaries of life, the pressures, the things that happen in life. Our hope doesn't get dashed on those things. Our hope is a living hope, a living hope that is identified and we identify in the person of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. That's our living hope. Our living hope is a person. And it is that hope, it is precisely that hope, which makes sense of everything we do and believe as Christians, as followers of Jesus Christ. That's what really matters. Martin Luther famously said, everything that is done in the world is done by hope. I'm standing here before you this morning because the very hope that I'm talking about is the same hope that I know can save you if you're not already in a relationship with Jesus Christ. It is a hope which takes you beyond the grave to life eternal. It means that death is dead. It is a hope, a, such an exciting, wonderful and loving hope. And it's the reason I stand here today. It's the reason Simon will stand here tonight. It's the reason that we as Christians are so hungry and eager to tell you about the person of Jesus Christ because of the hope embodied in the person of Jesus Christ. A living hope, not a fabricated hope, not an earthly hope, not a synthesized hope, not a temporary hope, not a hope that gets dashed on the rocks of life's troubles and tribulations, but a living hope founded in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And that is precisely the first stage of the encouragement that Peter is giving the church at this time when he knows that big trials are coming along. Then he says something altogether wonderful. So not only have the, we been born again to a living hope, born again, second birth, not the physical birth, but the spiritual birth through belief in the person of Jesus Christ. Not only have we been born again to a living hope, but to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading. Hear that again, an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading. Now, the inheritance, the use of the language of inheritance, would have, would have rung bells with the listeners. People would have considered and understood what inheritance means, to, to inherit from one's parents, specifically a, a father, to inherit. 
And typically in those days that would have been land or, or money or whatever. In fact, it really hasn't changed down through the centuries, has it? How one inherits. But this herit, inheritance can't perish, can't be spoiled, and won't fade. Because this inheritance is an inheritance in the glory of God. Hear that again. This is an inheritance in the glory of God. And, and I just love what it says. I just love what it says in the book of, in the book of Romans. Romans uh, chapter 8 and verse 17. And if children then heirs, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ, provided we suffer with him in order that we may also be glorified with him. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is to be revealed for us. We are heirs. We are heirs with Jesus. We have um, a mighty inheritance, an inheritance that is eternal, and something so wonderful as to share in the glory of God. That is our inheritance. What's more, as we continue in verse 4, that inheritance is being kept in heaven for you. It is being guarded. It is something that is precious. And God is so keen that we will, we will inherit and share in his glory that he goes on to say in verse 5, who by God's power are being guarded through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. We are being protected. God's power through his spirit is protecting us as inheritors of his glory to be fully revealed, the fullness of salvation fully revealed when Jesus comes again. How wonderful! Is that not a most hopeful of messages? Is that not a most hopeful of messages? You see, this living hope then becomes our compass in life. It becomes the very fabric of our DNA. Jesus is the very reason for living and living on in him and through him and in his power provided by the Spirit. What an amazing hope we have, especially in these days when so many things are impacting upon us and could lead us to despair. Isn't it wonderful to know that we have an inheritance that can't be spoiled, that won't fade, that will never perish, that is a living hope embodied in the person of the risen Lord Jesus Christ? And of course, then that has to beg the question, because we can't avoid the question, is that a living hope that you recognize for yourself today? Remember in verse 3, according to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope. Not the physical birth from one's mother, but the spiritual birth through the grace of God in the power of the Spirit. Do you want to inherit his glory today because he's wholly available for you today but it requires your repentance it requires an understanding of our feelings and our sinfulness but he's there he doesn't socially distance himself from you and he wants you to cry out to him and he will come and by his grace and his great mercy, he will cause you to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an amazing inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading. What's more, he will guard and keep you until our Lord Jesus comes again to ensure that you share in God's glory 
on in the last day. How amazing a hope is that? Is that something you want today? I sincerely and prayerfully hope that it is. Amen. gift of grace is Jesus my Redeemer. There is no more for heaven now to give. He is my joy, my righteousness and freedom, my steadfast love, my deep Yeah.
Well, folks, once again, it's been brilliant uh, to have you worshiping with us. Do remember that our little announcements are happening uh, in just a moment, so stick with that. And also, please remember that we have worship again at 6.30, where we're continuing on with our series on 1 Corinthians. So please do join us at half past six. I'm going to close in prayer. Heavenly Father, it has been good to be in your presence. And we thank you, Lord, even as we live in the land of shadows, that above it all, we stand safe in the shadow of your wings. So God, I pray that you will have touched and blessed all those who have been listening and joining in today. And I pray that we are ready for another week of living for you and serving you in everything we do. And the love of the Lord Jesus draw you to himself. The power of the Lord Jesus strengthen you in his service. The joy of the Lord Jesus fill your hearts and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. And we'll see you this evening. Hi everyone, it's Jane here. I hope you and your families are all doing really well. I'm just popping on quickly to say a big thank you to all of you who have now moved to electronic giving. We rely on your weekly and monthly tithes and offerings as our main source of income each month to pay our staff, our overheads, and to carry out all the activities that we do week by week in our church. Whilst we're not physically meeting up present, there is still plenty going on behind the scenes, so your continued support is very much appreciated. If you haven't done so already and you would like to move to electronic giving, then there are two main options. The first one is a standing order, which is a set amount that is transferred to the church bank account at a set time each month. We've put a link on the screen and in the description box below that will take you to the church website where we've put some more information on how to do this for various different banks. If that's not an option for you in your bank, then the second option is to donate via PayPal. Again, the link will take you to the church website where there is a PayPal button that will guide you through the process. If you have any questions at all about electronic giving, then please do not hesitate to get in contact with us and we will try to help where we can. I really hope that I get to see you all in the not so distant future. Thank you. Hello, hope you're all doing okay. Uh, just wanna give you a couple of updates around communication. So the first one, uh, our COVID-19 hotline is still open. Uh, so if you or somebody you know needs some help, or if you or somebody you know is feeling isolated, please don't hesitate to give that number a call and we'll do our best to help you. So just as a reminder, that number is 07544544181. Second thing I want to update you about is uh, prayer requests. So I'd just like to thank everybody who submitted a prayer request to date. And I just want to reassure you that those prayer requests are being dealt with in a small, discreet group. And if you have a prayer request that you would like to submit, there's a confidential form on the website. So if you go to marilyn.org slash prayer dash requests, you can submit it there. And finally, you know, communication is just so important these days, uh, just keeping everybody in the loop. And I just want to touch on our parish update. So the parish update email comes out weekly and contains information on our services, the Psalms for that week, uh, new blog posts, events, albeit uh, digitally for now. Um, and it's just a great way to, to let everybody know what we're doing to try and keep our parish together in, in these tough times. So if you don't receive these emails, I'd, I'd really like to encourage you to fill in a form on our website and give us your email address so that we can add you to that mailing list. So on our website, that's marilyn.org slash update dash your dash email. Thank you everybody and hope you're doing well.